Good afternoon. Welcome to Mass in St. Gregory the Great. My name is Lori, and I will be your lector for this Mass. Our celebrant will be Father David, assisted by Deacon Michael. Attention Eucharistic ministers, the May schedule has been emailed out. If you do not have an email, copies are in the sacristy. Kindly pick one up after Mass. Thank you. Rest for the Weary, a one-hour talk by Sister Sean, is this Thursday at St. Pius. We invite all parishioners to attend. Please RSVP to the parish office by Monday. Take and read the bulletin for important information on Save the Dates for Vacation Bible School, Summer Family Faith Formation, the shredding event, our spring mulch sale, and much more. Readings for this liturgy are located at 1171-1171 in the Gather Book. At this time, I ask you to stand and welcome those around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, Father. Uh, it gets a little fainter each week. We got to remember, we're in resurrection time. The Lord Jesus has risen from the dead. You know, this world is terrified of dying, and we're not. We don't rush it. We're not afraid of it, because we will live forever. That's why we come here to celebrate. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ, you came to call all sinners. Christ have mercy. 
Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Christ Jesus the Nazarene whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. 
give praise to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in anyone else. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will thank you for you have answered and you are my savior. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You are my God, I praise you. My God, I exalt you. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd 
and whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Driving on Hopkins Road yesterday, I suddenly encountered brake lights as far as I could see. Oh, what's going on? You know, you start doing this in the car, right? (laughs) And I can't see anything. There's no emergency vehicles. There's no disabled car on the side of the road. What is it? What's the problem here? Well, when I finally creeped up, I saw there were two geese standing in the driving lane. And... (laughs) not much more than a foot tall, and they had paralyzed the town of Amherst for a few hours. You have to laugh at this, don't you? You can't get mad, right? They're doing what God has created them to do. They're following their nature. They're listening to the voice of their shepherd who says, find yourself a good spouse, right? Geese mate for life. That's a great lesson. We can learn from the conduct of these animals. Build yourself a nice home, a very nice culvert in that section across in the wetlands, and raise your children and protect the home. That's what they were doing there. Well, there are all these big things going by our home. Let's get out and stop that. Protect the home. You know, it's good for us to remember there are a lot of threats to our homes and they come through your internet connection, everybody. We need to protect our home better than we do. We let things come into the house that we should have no business being in there. Protect the home as those two geese were doing. You can learn good lessons from nature. And that's why Jesus used so many natural parables, including the shepherd and the sheep. Building off Psalm 23, he talks about the good shepherd. This is John chapter 10. And there was a a book I read a few years ago, thin little book. Uh, I did a book study with some friends. I believe the author's name was Philip Keller. And it was A Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. He grew up in East Africa. His parents were Christian missionaries. And he grew up taking care of sheep. So when he got older, got himself a sheep farm, and that's what he did for a career. And so he just said, how accurate are these things in scripture? Do sheep really listen to the voice of their shepherd? Does it really work the way it does? He said, it's right on. People who wrote those verses by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit knew how the natural world worked far better than we did. So he talks about how shepherds will take sheep and follow the lay of the land. They want to get up there to the high ground where the green pasture is, but they got to follow the lay. We do the same thing. Route 219 does not just blast in a straight line to the Pennsylvania border. It follows the curve of the land and down and back up and winds around. It's easier that way. You just follow the way the land leads you. And that means that sometimes you have to go through the valley of the shadow of death in order to get up to the summit where you are bound. Happens in our lives all the time. We find ourselves in a time of great desperation, a time of real struggle and trial. Listen to the voice of the shepherd who will lead you through all of that and up to a better place. Sheep depend entirely. You know, they're unable to do much on their own. They'll just chew the grass right out, and, and now what do we do? They need someone to lead them to the, the, the next place. And we need to realize, like I said, we are not in, as in control of this world as we think we are. And we need the guidance of a bigger voice, a higher viewpoint, who knows what the next step is and is willing 
to lead us there. Like the sheep, we should listen to the voice of the shepherd. And people will say, so that's what you Catholics do? You put your brain on autopilot and just let God do everything for you? You hear this from atheists, right? Listen, I'm an educated person. I'm just not going to follow these old myths and just you know, let somebody tell me every way I should act. I've never done that in my life as a Catholic. I don't know about you. Sure, we have guidance, and so do the atheists, right? Follow the science, they always say. So you mean you just let science guide every decision you make? Yeah, yeah. See, we all have found fundamental principles in our lives, and we follow them because we believe this is the best way to live. We differ, but we're all following principles. None of us thinks everything through in our mind on our own. But we gotta puzzle things out, right? We have the guidance of the church and its ethical teachings, but you run into situations in your life all the time, and boy, I've never seen this one before. How would God want me to act in this situation? It's very much a cooperative effort of asking the shepherd for guidance and listening to his voice. So follow him. Jesus tells people all the time in the gospel to follow him. The original 12 apostles, when he recruits them, the rich young man who comes to him, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Well, keep the commandments. I really try to do that already. What else can I do? Follow me. He wouldn't do it, would he? Because he knew it was going to cause him to give things up, and he refused to follow. Don't be like him. Follow the one who invites you to the high ground, to the green pastures. Who do you follow? It's a good question to ask ourselves. We're told all the time, right? Follow me on Instagram. Follow me here. Click the subscribe button. Hit the bell so we can give you a notification at 2 a.m. and wake you up when we posted a new video. We're told we should follow. All We're constantly told to follow people. And I'll bet if you look at the list of people that you're currently following in your social media feed, you're going to find one voice in there probably shouldn't be there, right? That one does not lead me to green pastures. Get rid of that one. Delete it right out of the feet. In fact, look at the whole list and say, you know, there's a whole bunch here. They're not bad, but they don't really do anything for me. They're wasting my time. They're not leading me to anything great. Pare down that feed. Oh, it's great to have good advice and hear other viewpoints and, and, you know, just be aware of what's going on in the exchange of ideas. But make sure you cultivate that feed once in a while. Make sure you're not being led around by a voice you should not follow. And make sure that Jesus Christ is the number one voice in your list that you are following. There is no other name under heaven or earth by which we are saved, says, say, the apostles in our first reading, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, some of that compelling preaching. No other, no other voice, no other name by which we are saved, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, friends. You hear all the time, hey, there's many, many paths up the mountain. Sure, but we don't want to, we want to get off the mountain and into heaven. That's our goal, right? We don't want to stay on this broken down world forever. There's only one name that will take you there, and that is Jesus Christ. What about everybody else? You know, there's so many Hindus I know that are really beautiful people. And they will have a chance if they don't embrace Jesus now, when they stand at the end of time, right? We're all going to stand before Jesus for judgment. And some people are going to be mighty surprised of who is really in charge. And at that moment, you know, you've got to decide who you will follow. Better to follow him now and learn the voice of the shepherd. He is the only voice by which we are saved. You might know the name Kathy Lee Gifford famous voice in, in media, did a lot of television work, and, you know, really a bright, cheerful, bubbly person, always on the morning show, kind of waking you up. And Well, she got pushed out at the end of her career, if you remember. And I, I saw an interview with her once, and they were kind of trying to get her to deal the dirt on other people. Who exactly was responsible for this? And she wouldn't, she wouldn't lower herself to that. She just said, God didn't want me to be in that industry any longer than I needed to be. Oh. She mentioned God on public television. There you go. And that's the voice of someone listening to the shepherd. You know, I got a bum deal and I got pushed right out the door. And maybe that was God opening an escape hatch for me because something bad was going to happen down the road. He, was, road. he was leading me through that valley to get to a better place. As we think about who we listen to and who can really deliver on the promises that, that they put out there, you know, all, all these new advertising and products and, and, and new, new prescriptions and things. They're, they're always, you know, stating all these wonderful things that it will do for you. And they might not always deliver. 
There's only one person who can deliver everything he promises, and that is Jesus Christ, the God-man, the Holy Son of God, who promises abundant life. Why has why he come? In the verse right before our gospel, John 10.10, 10, he says, I have come so you might have life more abundantly. That's the one you want to follow, brothers and sisters. And realize along the way that some of us are called to become the shepherd. Lowercase s, this is Good Shepherd Sunday, fourth Sunday of Easter, and capital G, capital S, he is our good shepherd, the one who leads us, the only name by which we will be saved. But some of us are called to become lowercase s shepherds, hopefully good shepherds, and to lead people deeper in the ways of faith, the vocations of the church. I'm still the vocation director. You still got to put up with me talking about this stuff when I'm here. It's my weekday job for the diocese, and I recruit for uh, the priesthood. Boy, do we need them right now. The deacons, oh, more deacons, the better. I just love more help, you know. Religious life, religious sister. Do you remember a time, depending on your age, when you ran into a religious sister on every corner of town, you know, especially in a very, in South Buffalo, you're always running into that habit. And what did it do? It just made you think about, should I be holier? You know, it called you to be a better version of yourself just by seeing them. Boy, we got to get that back. You know, we need that vocation back again. And lay ministry in the church with all the changes going around in the diocese, a bigger time for the lay people to step up, more opportunities. Maybe not to work for the church, maybe, maybe not. Maybe just to take on a new ministry. Get involved in some, boy, there, we've got a ministry, you know, the ministry fair that we have every couple of years here. It's amazing how many wonderful things are going on from this parish. And now we got other families of parishes with other groups. Take on something, be a part of it. If you're already in something, don't shy away from leadership if someone asks you. Think about becoming the Good Shepherd. Ultimately, on Good Shepherd Sunday, it is the World Day of Prayer for Vocations, and so uh, vocations to the priesthood. And I just want to encourage you, if uh, young men, you're thinking about that vocation, young women thinking about religious life, give me a call and, and ask about it. Uh, buffalovocations.org is my website. That'll get you my phone number, email address. I'm very good at keeping secrets, everybody. I think a lot of people worry, if I call him, suddenly it's out there and everybody's going to know and they're going to demand I go and say, hey, we're just talking, you know, at this point. <laughs> As, you know, we got to get to know each other. No pressure. And I, I, you know, if you know me, you know I'm a privacy nerd, right? I don't share anything I don't have to. And as a priest, that's good. You keep a lot of secrets. My electronic devices are completely locked down. All the time, they're asking me to give more privacy. I keep getting those little notifications. This app would work, would work a lot better if you would share your location data. Hey, don't you want to share your location data so we can provide more targeted advertising to you? Hey, my, uh, uh, no. <laughs> you are not going to find out where I eat my breakfast and where I stop for the, uh, all those things. I'm not giving it away. I'm keeping my secrets, and I will keep yours too if you call the vocation office. It's just time to think about, you know, life and, and where we're called and, and what we're doing. Um, Maybe your life has been a little unsatisfying. You know, the promises they told me in college just haven't really panned out. They, Jesus Christ promises abundant life. And every year in Fortune, is it Fortune magazine, they do a, a ranking of the greatest job satisfactions. It's a big survey they give out. And in the top three every year, clergy. All the struggles, all of the big, tough moments, and uh, despite that, very satisfied with what we do. We know we are making a difference that lasts for eternity. When we get off this world and into the next, all of the impact we've had will still last. So perhaps, I saw this on a vocation poster once, perhaps you'd like to trade your boss for a different one. <laughs> Let us stand and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, to the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our good shepherd to provide for our needs, we turn to him with our prayers and all of the needs of this fallen world. For unity in the Church of God. Jesus prayed for unity among those who follow the Good Shepherd. May we look for ways to be one flock, faithful disciples of the Holy One who laid down his life for the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders in the Church. With Jesus the Good Shepherd as their model, May the leaders in the church be faithful in what they preach and teach about the purposes of God revealed in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a desire to live as children of God. God's love for us is so lavish that we have become God's children. May this understanding fill us with confidence to face the future with hope, helping us overcome fear and despair in life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who need help, who need our help in the community. In Jesus' name, Peter healed the crippled man. May we too reach out to others in need and by our faith in Christ and his power to save, bring healing and wholeness to our communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Thomas Horan, whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass, and for our own prayers and intentions, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. Norma R. Mossel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless, fill us with the joy of your resurrection and the peace this world cannot give. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our ushers will now take up the collection.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously. In Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and to make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Peace with you, Father David. See you next peace week. Peace with you, sir. Peace with you, sir. <laughs>
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Okay. 
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Happy Good Shepherd Sunday, and let's continue our prayers for priestly vocations, all the vocation of the church. Marriage is a vocation. We need good holy marriages. People aren't getting married anymore. What happened? <laughs> Nobody enters into vocations anymore. We've got to pray for all these things. Special announcement here, um, we'd like to uh, read a, a note from the Duquin Blum family. You've been following this, I don't think we've uh, identified them until now, but uh, who suffered a very tragic house fire, um, and uh, they write a note of thanksgiving for all that you've done for them. We are humbled by the outpouring of support we have received and continue to receive. Every prayer, note, kind word, and support, emotional or financial, has shown us God's light and healing through each of you. Please continue to pray for us as we are saying our prayers of thanksgiving for you. And boy, that's, that's what church is meant to be, isn't it? You know, just uh, members of the body of Christ. When one member suffers, we all suffer with it. When one member rejoices, we rejoice together. Um, the very, we're all very proud of, of the way that all the, the family parishes, all four worship sites have risen up to this moment. Um, if, if you missed it, you know, we've been collecting gift cards, just the most simplest way to provide for, uh, for the family at this time. You can still drop them off in the drop-off slot at the office or in next week's collection. Any cards that come in, we'll, we'll send them to the family. The book I mentioned in the homily is A Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. Little tiny book, doesn't take long to read. Really, really stuck with me. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I think Phil Keller is the, the author's name. And um, as usual, I've got my vocation swag on the tables as you leave, so uh, <laughs> feel free to take one of those pens with you and, and spread the word. Give it to a, to a young person who's uh, wondering what to do with their life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Yeah.